you think monoclonals maybe have been underused, doctor? I guess at this point, um, watching uh, vaccines and it's, our bubble's been popped a little bit, not really, I guess, about the effectiveness, but they're not the end all be all in this, in this pandemic. And we need, we need some other arsenal, some other arrows in the arsenal. Right, well, we're getting a chance to try out uh, at full scale technologies that we needed to try out for a long time. And one of the newest developments is that we're using long acting antibodies. These antibodies are engineered to last for six months or a year. And so they become uh, almost like a vaccine for people who can't be vaccinated, like people with cancer or stem cell transplants, things like that. So that's a very exciting new technology that enables us to start thinking about preventing disease, not just treating it with antibodies. So those are monoclonals. Those are what fully humanized monoclonals. What do you do? You, you, uh, you add something to it to, to extend the half-life of, of the protein? How, how does that work? Right, they're fully natural antibodies that we get from a survivor. And then uh, we can engineer just a few little changes in the bottom part of the antibody that regulates how long it remains in your body. Uh, so it's just a minor engineering change. And it's been used in about 10 or 12 clinical trials now, so we know it's safe. Uh, and in the trials that were used for this new long acting antibody for COVID that AstraZeneca has, uh, individuals were protected over 80% for at least six months, and it looks like probably out to a year. So um, that's going to enable us to prevent other diseases, not just uh, COVID, but to start thinking about using antibodies very widely for infectious diseases. And so we've uh, launched a new initiative called AHEAD 100 to make antibodies for the 100 most likely next causes of epidemics. We want to be ready ahead of time and not just be reactive. I don't mean like for the, the next hundred that could cause an thanks for that. That's a good morning. Uh, nice thing to think about, uh, doctor. A hundred more. That's frightening. It's been a hundred years since the last one. I would hope that we, we get better at this. Tell me, doctor, what, what it's been, I don't know what, six weeks of Omicron, maybe, maybe less. What have we, what do we know now? How is our view of, of COVID and, and the way we deal with it? How has it changed since we've seen this variant? Well, I think we were all hoping this thing would be over uh, quickly. And we're, we're in an evolution where uh, variants are continuing to come, but Omicron seems maybe not as pathogenic, maybe not as severe, uh, but more infectious. So we're transitioning to a point where probably everyone in the world is going to be vaccinated or infected uh, and uh, we'll get to a, a, more, a more normal situation. But it's not going to end. We're going to start living with it. And we're seeing that transition with Omicron. Kayla? But doctor, for this current wave, for this current wave, uh, South African scientists have equated the peak in that country to the north and south face of Mount Everest. And I'm wondering where you see the peak of Omicron here in the United States. Wall Street strategists are trying to put it anywhere between January 9th and the end of the month. Uh, but of course, they are not epidemiologists. And I'm, I'm wondering if you see or have a read on when this could peak in the United States. Well, I, I, that just completely depends on the, the number of people who are vaccinated or previously infected, the total herd immunity that we have in the population. And there has been a, a large increase in interest in vaccination. So we're still weeks or months away from our peak, but we, we certainly can uh, blunt that, we think, with more vaccinations. Uh, but uh, the, nor the masking and all that stuff is just delaying you know, the inevitable I think vaccinating or using antibodies in those who can't be vaccinated uh, is really the solution that we need to use right now. But South Africa didn't have a very high vaccination rate, and yet it came in and out relatively like a flash in the pan. You don't see that as being the same path that Omicron will take here? Well, it's the sum total of who's infected and who's vaccinated. So if, if a majority of, of people in a in a region, city, family group, if a majority of people become infected, then the virus will pass on. It, it needs uh, non-immune people uh, for the most part. Now, we do see Omicron infecting people who are already immune or partially immune from vaccination or previous infection, but it's much less severe. You don't see those people going to the hospital. So I think we're getting benefit from uh, how, long, how far we are into the pandemic plus the vaccination. We're benefiting from that partial immunity against Omicron. So when the spike happens, it does move on. And that's, 
historically, that's what we hope for and what we would think. We, we've there have been times where that um, has been thrown into question, which has been troubling times, Doctor. Where we thought maybe you could have Omicron and Delta at the same time, or, or where you thought that perhaps uh, Delta immunity wouldn't work on Omicron, and we've seen Omicron uh, break through triple vaxxed people. So you wonder how effective the the immunity is. But even though it's a small study in in South Africa, if we knew uh, that uh, the, the herd immunity that we're hopefully going to get someday from COVID would work fairly well against most of the variants that they didn't deviate enough through mut mutations to t totally get around that. That would be a big deal because then you could add up uh, total uh, b vaccinations plus people that have had one of the variants of COVID and try to get to a number where you feel comfortable that there's not going to be a, a, a really bad third, fourth, fifth wave, and it becomes endemic at that point. Right. Well, I think we have to focus on the, the severe disease, hospitalization, deaths, things like that. We're going to get to a point where uh, those numbers are going to keep trending lower. Even though infection rates may be high, the infections will be relatively minor. And that's what the, the partial immunity gets you. Even, even uh, if you're not fully immune to a variant, uh, you're resistant to the severe disease. And that's really, I think, the goal. 